Lecture 10.2 is on measuring angles and arcs. We have central angles. The sum of the central angles of a circle with no interior points in common is 360. So if we look, the central angle is the angle formed from the, the center and two radii. So ang uh, angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3 are all central angles. The measure of those are always going to add up to be 360 degrees. Arcs then are the length of the circle that goes from uh, the endpoints of a radius on the circle to the endpoint of another radius on the circle. So we have AB shown in the bottom right as an arc. And a minor arc is the shortest arc connecting two endpoints on a circle. The measure of a minor arc must be less than 180, and it's equal to the measure of its related central angle. So the measure of arc AB is going to be equal to the measure of the, its central angle, which is angle ACB, which is shown to be x degrees. A major arc, then, is the longest arc connecting two points two endpoints on a circle, so we're going around the circle the other direction. It is always greater than 180, and it is equal to 360 degrees minus the measure of the minor arc that's contained with the same endpoints. So the measure of arc ADB is going to be equal to 360 minus the measure of that minor arc, which was arc AB, and so that's going to equal 360 minus x. A semicircle is an arc with endpoints that lie on a diameter, and the measure of a semicircle is always going to be 180 because it's half of the circle. We know the circle is going to add up to have 360, uh, so half of that is going to end up being 180. So if we are going to find the measures of the central angles, or in this case we're asked to find x, this, and we're told the sum of the measures of RT, angle RTS angle STU and angle UTV is 180 and we know that because RV is a diameter so that's going to split our circle in half meaning arc RSV is going to be a semicircle so we know that's going to add up to 180 so we can um, set that summation up we know the measure of those angles is going to equal 180 degrees and then we just plug in what we know we know RTS is 8x minus 4 uh, STU is 13x minus 3, and UTV is 5x plus 5. So we just plug in what we know. We know that's going to equal 180. Then when we combine like terms, we know 26x minus 2 is going to equal 180. We add that 2 to both sides. 26x is going to equal 182. So x is going to equal 7. All we were asked for was to find the value of x, so x equals 7. We could use that to find different angles if we were asked to uh, at a later time. This problem asks us to find the value of x again. We know uh, AD is a diameter because both endpoints are on the circle and it goes through the center. So we know that splits up the circle into two equal portions, so from A to C to D is going to be a semicircle. We know that's going to add up to 180. Uh, and then we know the the arcs that make that up are also going to add up to 180. So we know 75 plus 5x minus 5 plus 7x plus 2 is going to equal 180. So we can combine like terms. We know 12x plus 72 is going to equal 180. So 12x equals 108, meaning x is going to equal 9. And that's going to be choice A. major arcs and minor arcs. We know the minor arc of the picture we have here is going to be AB uh, because 
with minor arcs, we just go from endpoint to endpoint of our central angle. The major arc is going to be ACB. We need to include that the, the third letter, the C, to give us the direction that we're going around the circle. We're going from A all the way over to C, and then from C to B to make that arc. And it's going to look much nicer than that when you do it. Our central angle of this picture is going to be P, uh, because that is the angle uh, f that is formed at the center of our, our circle. Finding the measures of each arc. We know arc NM is going to be equal to the central angle uh, that it is related to. We know arc NM is related to angle NRM, and that's 180 degrees. So we know arc NM is going to equal 180 degrees, or 80 degrees, excuse me, 80 degrees. PMN is from P to M to N. So PN is a diameter, so we know that's going to break our circle into two, uh, into semicircles. We know the arc length of a, or the measure of a semicircle is going to be 180. And then MPN is going to be the major arc that is related to the minor arc of MN. So we're going to have to take 360 minus that minor arc, which was 80, and that's equal to 80 for the arc MPN. All right, if LP is a radius of circle P, identify LO as a major arc, minor arc, or semicircle, then find its measure. So we look, LO, we go from L to O around the circle. We know since that is less than 180 degrees, it's going to be a minor arc. And we know uh, that since MPL is 90, LPO is also going to be 90, and we know our arc measure is always related to our central angle measure, so if that's 90, then we know LO is also 90, so our answer is going to be A. LP is a radius of circle P, identify MLO as a major arc, minor arc, or semicircle. So we look MLO goes halfway around the circle. It is split up by MO, which is a diameter. So we know MLO must be a semicircle. We know all semicircles are equal to 180 degrees. So that is going to be answer C. LP is a radius of circle P again. Identify LNO as a major arc, minor arc, or semicircle. So we know L and O is going from L all the way around to N and then finishing up by hitting O. So we know it went more than halfway around the circle, so it must be a major arc. And we know major arcs are going to be equal to um, 360 minus their respective minor arcs. So the minor arc of L and O would be L O, that is the segment that's left there that we didn't cover already. We know LO, since it, it corresponds to a 90 degree angle, we know LO is going to equal 90. So LNO is going to be 360 minus that 90. So that's going to end up being 270. So we know we have a major arc that is equal to 270 degrees. So that's the letter D. The arc addition postulate is very similar to the segment addition postulate. We know any arc can be broken down to its uh, the the sum of its corresponding or uh, extra parts. So ABC is going to be equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC. Finding measures of arcs then, if we were looking to find GE, we know GE is going to be equal to the measure of GH plus the measure of HE, so that's going to be equal to 40 plus 80, which is going to be 120. GEF is going to be equal to GE, which we just found, plus EF. We know GE was 120, EF, they tell us is 110, 
So 120 plus 110 is going to give us 230. To find GF, then, that's going to be the minor arc uh, on the other side of GEF. So we know that we can take 360 minus the 230 to get what's left. So GF is going to be 130. Finding measures of arcs again, if we're looking for BD, BD contains BC and CD, so that's going to be 60 plus 82, so that's going to give us 142. To find BE, we know BE is going to correspond to that angle, um, and that's what's left after you add up all of the other ones, so we had 142. ED, we see is 100, so uh, from B to C to E would give us 242, so we can take 360 minus that 242 to find out what was left. For BE, that's going to be 118, and then to find BED, we're going to have to take the 118 that we just got from BE and add the 100 of ED to get 218. Finding the measures of arcs. Again, find X and the measure of arc AB. We know the measure of all of the arcs in a circle are going to add up to be 360. So we can add all of those together. We've got 4X plus 3X plus 2X plus X has to equal 360. So 10X is going to equal 360. So we know X is going to equal 36. And if we want to find the measure of arc AB, AB they tell us is 4X. So AB is going to equal 4 times 36, which is going to be 144. All right, find the measure of arc LHI in circle M. We know the measure of LHI is going to equal the measure of LH plus the measure of HI. We know HI is 32 because they tell us that. And since Angle LMI is 90 degrees. We know angle LMH is going to be 90 minus 32 to find the other part there. And that's going to be 58 degrees then for the other portion for LMH. It's going to be 58. So to find LHI, we're just going to have to combine those two arcs, the 58 and the 32. Uh, so 58 plus 32 is going to give us our 90 degrees for LHI. Ooh, I did not mean to write over that. So that's going to equal our 58 plus 32, which is going to be 90. Again, if we were asked to find the measure of IJK, we know IJK is going to equal IJ plus JK. IJ is going to be 90 degrees. We know that arcs are going to be equal to their corresponding angles. So IJ is going to be 90 because of that 90 degrees. And JK is going to be 58 because it is a vertical angle to LMH. So those two are going to be congruent. We already knew LMH was 58 degrees. So then JMK must also be 58 degrees. So its corresponding arc is going to be 58. So we add those together. And that's going to be 148. Arc length. Arc length of arc AB is going to equal the measure of arc AB divided by 360 times 2 pi r. If you notice, 2 pi r is just the circumference of our circle. And the measure of arc AB over 360 is just going to be the fraction of our, of our circle. We know or the portion that we're, we're looking for. If arc AB was a quarter of the circle, that'd be 90 degrees. 
we're just taking 90 over 360, which is one one fourth times the circumference. Um, it's a nice uh, use of ratios there to find arc length. And our arc length is the actual distance traveled from A to B now. It is not a degree measure related to the, the central angle. We can find the actual length of that. So if we're going to find the arc length of AB in this case, we're going to take the measure of arc AB, which is going to be our 50 degrees, and we're going to plug that in to our formula, and that's going to be multiplied by 2 times pi times our radius, which is 5. So we're going to get this equation, plug that all into our calculator, and that's going to be approximately 4.36 for the arc length of AB. If we're going to find the arc length of CD here, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to plug it in to our equation. We're going to have 100 over 360 times 2 pi times our radius, which is 7. That's going to be approximately 12.22. Finding the, section, the central angle, or the arc measure, uh, given an arc length and a radius, we're going to use the exact same formula. We know our arc length of LM is going to equal the measure of LM all over 360 times 2 times pi times r. Now we plug in what we know. We know the arc length is going to be 16.76. The radius is 8. We're actually looking for the measure of that arc now. So then we need to... We're going to end up dividing both sides by 2 times pi times our radius, which is 16 pi. Uh, so that's how we get the 16 pi onto the other side. And from here, we're going to need to multiply both sides by 360 to solve for the measure of LM. And then 16.76 times 360 all over 16 pi is going to be approximately 120 degrees. So that is the measure of, of arc LM. It's also the measure of that central angle. Finding the circumference. We know the circumference is going to be 2 pi r, so we need to find the radius. So we plug in what we know again to our arc length formula. We know the arc length is going to be equal to the measure of the arc divided by 360 times 2 pi r. But one thing we notice right here, 2 pi r is our circumference, so that's what we need to solve for. So we plug in what we know. We know uh, RS is 10.2, and we know the measure of RS is 45. So we've got 45 over 360 times 2 pi r is going to equal 10.2. We know we need to solve for 2 pi r, so we're going to divide by 45 over 360. Uh, dividing by a fraction is just multiplying by the reciprocal. So first we multiply by 360, then we're going to end up having to divide by 45. That's going to equal 2 pi r. Um, so we could, again, solve this for the radius if we wanted to, but we know 2 pi r is our circumference, so that's what we need to solve for. Plugging that into our calculator, 2 pi r is approximately 81.6. Finding perimeter. Um, here we know the... Perimeter is going to equal 6 plus 6 from the two side lengths. This is also 6. And then plus uh, 10 pi, because that is going to be the circumference of these two semicircles put together. Uh, two semicircles that are equal are going to be a whole circle. So we need to find the circumference of that circle. If the diameter is 10, we know the circumference is going to be 10 pi. So we just add those together. 6 plus 6 plus 10 pi is going to be uh, 10 pi plus 12, which is approximately 43.41. Finding the perimeter again, we take what we know. We know this side is 8, and they're all congruent, so that is 8, and that is 8. So part of our perimeter is going to be adding these three together. But we also need to add this arc length here, or uh, the, the perimeter of our semicircle, we know that's going to be equal to half of our circumference. We know our circumference is going to be equal to pi times d. Our diameter is 8, so our circumference of the whole, that whole circle 
would be 8 pi, but we only have a semicircle here, so we need half of that. Half of that 8 pi is going to be equal to 4 pi. So then we just add up what we know. We know the perimeter is going to be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 4 pi. So that's going to be 24 plus 4 pi, which is approximately 36.56. Finding the perimeter again, we have two circles. We have four semicircles, two of which are equal to each other for our perimeter. So we need to find the circumference of both of them. We know the circumference of the little circle is going to equal 2 times pi times the radius. So that's going to be 2 times pi times 6, which is going to be 12 pi. The circumference of the two bigger circles is going to be pi times our diameter. Our diameter is 14. So we're going to have 14 pi there. So we have 12 pi plus 14 pi, which is 26 pi, and that's approximately 81.68. And that ends our lecture for 10.1.